Uh, so lap on the rune for four weeks. It kind of does feel choppy. So we'll see how it goes. And I haven't ridden this bike for months. So, uh, or at least, at least a month, month or a couple of months for sure. Uh, see how we go. I've got no truck. I've got an acid guy on the front that I just swapped off of the uh, rain when I got it. And I literally have no confidence in the edge of this tire. None. Right, that's actually not too bad out the back. Oh, this might be as good as it's been, or close to even. I'm a little, it actually feels like I'm still a touch high in the sag, even though I'm quite deep. I might just button off the compression a click. Ooh, yeah, that, the edge of this Asagai is not fun at all compared to the DHF. Not fun at all. When you push on the edge of it, it just squirms. And I know that when you get used to it, you just don't ride that edge and it's all good. But uh, I reckon I need to go up on the bar height on this thing as well, for sure, after tipping into that. Oh, I missed the right, that inside is a good, good line into this. Whoa! Whoa. The front's a little bit bouncy as well, maybe. Ooh. Maybe I can slide that rebound down on the front. Give it a quicker compression to keep it a little more stable. Yeah, no, no confidence on the edge of that tire. I'm kind of pulling it, pulling it around to where I want it instead of leaning on it and pointing and shooting. A little bit sketchy if I'm honest. Whoa. So the rear is basically the same. I've gone 130 in the rear from 132. So pretty much the same, just a little bit more. I didn't bottom it on that hit. And the fork, I've gone down two PSI. So I've gone a 95, uh, sorry, 94. So three PSI down and uh, three more clicks of compression just to uh, take a little heat off of the spring itself and then fill up that gap that I've opened because the spring was just a little choppy off the top. That little gap that I've opened, I've filled with compression for more control. So more resistance to go into the travel through the control mechanism instead of the resistance mechanism, which is the spring. So getting a bit deep there, but... So we go. I think I sped the rebound up a click as well. I did at the rear, so that might be a bit much. But it might not be. Ball feels better. Let's see if I can put some trust in this Asa guy now. better on the fork and just a little fast at the rear just a quick fast I think but oh I missed the right again not paying attention no matter oh I almost squared that you do need to get outside for that last left but
a little bit wild through there. I think it's just that speed at the back. Just pushing me back out of the, the platform through the repeated hits. Oh, I would have made that. But I don't have the... Yeah, I didn't quite have the confidence for the outer guy for the turn. Oh. That was better. That was actually quite good as well. So definitely two clicks from fast on that rebound. Could maybe go to three. To really have it just sit and stay like a good boy. But then it may pack a little. 130 feels killer. It's gonna have a, uh, a lap on the rain. That actually didn't feel too bad then. I put that tire on the edge on a couple of those corners up the front. It wasn't too bad. It's a max terror, not a max grip, so it's a little harder. So it does hold maybe a little better, as in it doesn't deform as easily. That's what I think that problem is with that that edge. It just deforms and says catch you later, agitator. Oh, these are on Strava, so that both those laps will be uh, set as lap one and lap two on the rune. That second climb felt like it was faster with the fork a little more compliant. And uh, good drivers just drive. And um, yeah, I think it made for a little bit more efficient on the way up. So I don't know, we'll see when the Strava uploads. Good time, 69, all letters, if you're wondering. It's my Strava name. So I just uploaded that. And that was my fastest climb up for a long, long time, 16.37. And it was my fastest lap down four weeks ever, which was a bit of a surprise because I went a little slow down the bottom section, like just through the jumps and stuff. Uh, so... <laughs> All that time, I've been kind of bouncing around and looking for what I'm looking for on this bike, and it's just there. I think I'm pretty close. I'm definitely going to send this fork off for a service, just so I can get fresh seals, fresh everything, so it feels as good as possible, and then reassess. And maybe I'm going to keep this bike. Or, at least, at the very least, I'm stoked with it and happy to sell it. Whereas before, I just... I don't feel right selling a bike when it's not singing because you buy a second-hand bike and I know what it's like you buy someone's second-hand bike and it feels like a piece of donkey shit and it takes you forever to get it singing and it's like you know you oh I should have I bought a new one and all that junk that goes through your head nah when I sell my bikes I make sure they're singing my patrol was singing when I sold it my remedy was killer when I sold it the slash was killer and this thing's going to be killer too. So that feels really good. That's 130. I'm 70. I'm probably dressed at 78 at the moment. Uh, 130 PSI. Two clicks from full fast on that rebound. And I think I'm five compression or six compression. One, two. Th oh, I'm only two compression. Okay, yeah. So two clicks of compression on the back there. Didn't bottom it. Didn't feel any like disappearing through the travel the only oh, i probably could have gone a little bit more compression for just where you get out of the steep stuff and you go along that left traverse at the start of it you kind of get seesawed around a bit i still was getting getting seesawed around through that through that bumpy stuff so i could improve that maybe a little more compression to again resist movement maybe drop a little pressure again maybe go to 125 and see what that feels like but then i'm getting real deep in that sag so but it doesn't feel unnatural, it doesn't feel like it's wrong. So maybe I'll just keep chasing feel and ignore the numbers. So we're at 126 now. Two clicks from fast at the rear. And I've gone four clicks of, uh, of compression from two. I'm feeling five, but I'm going to start at four and see what, we're at, see what we've got. See if that stabilizes it enough without introducing too much resistance. <coughs> Still plenty to push against in that back end. Nice ride height. Ooh. 
Oh, come in hot I reckon it's choppy in the back now. That extra compression. And so just going through the videos, and I realised that last run was cut short. Uh, just as I pulled up, I don't know whether GoPro played up. It's done that a few times, but um, I pulled up, changed the colour of things, and sent it down. Nothing special down the rest of it. Uh, actually, no, I did. I had a little crash, so you'd missed out on something special there. It wasn't much. I just cross rutted and then got kind of stuck. I'm not sure what happened to the footage. Um, but, uh, yeah, to summarize, the bike's killer. So to summarize it, what we've done is a little softer on the fork and filled in that soft spring with compression, which definitely fixed it or made it better. A um, little more control. Not quite there yet, but definitely good. I'll get that fork service. Uh, rear shock, two tokens, all four bands. 128, I reckon, is, that, is the sweet spot, and I'm going to keep that compression right open. But at the start, I also went higher on that handlebar, and that made everything a little easier too. So that put me in a better position to climb, put me in a better position to descend, and uh, just put me in more of a neutral not front seat, not back seat, and, and when I got into that steep stuff, I wasn't reaching. You can see on that last run, when I dropped into the steep bit after the start of the rock garden, I couldn't get that high line on the left. I was stuck on that low line because the rear was just a little not compliant. It was just that, that, that. So as I went to steer into it, the rear jumped off of something and it threw, it, it stopped me from steering on. So uh, I have to keep that compression open on the rear shock there. Um, that's not a blanket statement for all bikes. That is always individual for the bike and the, uh, it's got to be relative to the way you've set the spring up and the rebound and whatever and, and the kin kinematics of the suspension itself. So uh, there's a fair bit into it, but it feels killer. It feels much better. I'm happy with how it is now. If I was to sell it, I'd be happy to sell it. I'd be happy that someone's getting a good setup bike. Uh, but I'm going to service that fork first and I'm going to hit it out again and see if I can make it a little better again and, and maybe just set some times on these local trails before I do get rid of it. Uh, something for the for the rain to, to beat, which I'm sure I'll be able to get to, but um, yeah, this feels good.